Hello YouTube, this is Ardwolf. Welcome. We're going to play Gary Grigsby's War in the West from developer Slytherin and publisher Matrix Games. Uh, we're going to play, or we're going to start at least, the campaign scenario. Now I'm not super familiar with this game, so this should not be regarded as a tutorial. But I am new with this, so I am going to talk about what I'm doing and uh, explain some stuff. So if you are unfamiliar with this game, it is a very detailed simulation of the war in the West between 1943 and 1945, in Western Europe, that is. So we're going to pick a scenario, and, and I'm playing on normal difficulty. We're going to play as the Western Allies here. Let's start the scenario, and let's see if we can figure out uh, how the hell the air works. So I did start this earlier just to poke around. So this uh, this is the automatic air directive creation screen. And there's a huge and elaborate and very complicated air system in here that is almost a game in its own right. Um, so there's a couple of things that we need to pay attention to. Um, for one thing, we're going to be launching amphibious invasions in the Mediterranean, so we need to keep amphib support south on and we definitely want to establish air superiority and we're probably going to leave this where it is for three or four turns I think. Uh, we want ground support relatively high too. Uh, ground attack south is on high and what we want to definitely do is we want to hit the airfields, the ferries, and we want to maximize interdiction. Uh, I will lower attacking ports and I think I can probably lower attacking railways for now. Yeah, and that's fine. But I want interdiction to be at its maximum here. And I want ferry strikes. Because the, the ferry, in this case, the important one, is going to be the ferry between Messina and Calabria on the toe of Italy. And we would like the Germans to be able to move as little as possible over that crossing. So I think we are satisfied with this. Uh, again, in the north, which is you know basically France, we don't care too much. Uh, I'm going to set... I feel like I should be setting air superiority to high here, too. So let's do that, and let's create our air directives. And this will basically automatically set up the air directives for me. And then we can close out of this. And now we have basically uh, the way the turn is structured is there is a there is a turn in the turn there is an axis turn and an allied turn in that order. In this case, we are starting on July third, nineteen forty three. There is no axis turn one, so we're starting at basically the second half of that turn. Um, in the, each uh, side's turn, there is an air phase and a phase in which everything else happens. So uh, what I would like to do is be able to actually make some modifications here and at least see um, how one manually sets air directives, and I'm unclear as to exactly how one does that. Um, so if we go to Info Screens, this brings up the Air Doctrine screen, and this gives me some information about my various air units. Uh, but I don't really care too much about that right now. And here's the replacement withdrawal schedule, so you can see uh, we don't get anything until July, at which point we get a battalion, another battalion, uh, some flak and engineers. These will be support units. 5th U.S. Infantry Division comes in uh, in August, so we're not really going to get much in the way of reinforcements anytime soon. So, but we do have amphibious invasions set up. So these are our various functions available in the air phase. And I think what we're going to do is just activate, let's zoom out a wee bit. We're just going to run the air doctrine. So let's run the, what air doctrines the computer came up with. And let's see what happens. Now we can change the amount of detail that the, com the computer, the game is giving us. Um, and we can scroll over here. We're going to run a lot more sorties than the than the uh, Axis are, obviously. And I hope I didn't completely bung things up by actually giving uh, the northern air sector something to do. I need the ports. I don't particularly want to bomb the ports. I need the ports more than the Germans do. So 
And if I say the Germans, I mean the Axis because the Italians are still in the war at this point. Historically, they wouldn't be for much longer. So we have run 13,000, 14,000 sorties to the Axis's five or 6,000. Um, the Allies have not, at this point, established total air supremacy, uh, which they would basically have done by say mid-1944, but we're not there yet. They, the Luftwaffe still got a lot of punch left in it at this time. But what we would like to do, the more planes we shoot down now, uh, you can see we've lost a lot more planes than the Germans have, but we're up to 22,000 plus sorties here. As far as I'm concerned, in the, in the northern sector, the only air mission we should be running for a while is going to be air superiority. So, we have total sorties that we flew 26,778. We lost 553 aircraft and had almost 1,200 damaged. The enemy lost 189 and got almost 300 damaged, but we can absorb those losses much better than the Axis can. So hopefully the game will back me up on that. Um, so back to Sicily. Okay, so the way this works, and it, it I struggled with this quite a bit, monkeying with it, um, there are basically amphibious HQs, and I'm still kind of vague on exactly uh, how those HQs are created. Do they merely appear according to the uh, reinforcement schedule? Can you create them? But these are the things that basically you set them up in a port stacked with units, and that will allow you then to prepare those units to perform an amphibious assault. So if we switch to the amphibious transport mode, we're going to see our amphibious targets are these red hexes. So we're going to hit invade. And yes, we would like to launch an amphibious assault. And there they are. And they just show up with their uh, attached units. Now, uh, when I say attached, I mean something very specific here. The next thing we have to do is run the other invasions. And that should do it for the British, so or Commonwealth, I should say. So you can see uh, that these guys are still on ships. We're going to take care of that in a minute. Uh, these guys are still offshore, and they're attacking here, and they actually won't land until the end of the turn. So this turn is going to be a very quick turn. So we have, I'm looking for the American amphibious HQs. Here's one. Let's invade with this. There's another one. Let's invade with this. And I'm pretty sure there's one more that I'm not seeing. Is this it? This is it. Okay. So now let's go take a look at the actual forces. So we have our Americans, we have our British. All right, so we have the British uh, American Second Corps, Second Corps, Second Corps. So let's then, you see this orange line is tracing to its HQ. And here's, this is going to be, uh, the U.S. 7th Army, so that's Patton right there. So we want to move this 2nd Corps and the 9th Infantry Division with regular movement to its port hex. This is the U.S. 1st Armored Division. So we've got a lot more juice here to go. So we're so we, we moved these units into a port and now I'm gonna to go to naval transport mode and we're gonna move them to Sicily too. Now you do have the chance of getting your stuff sunk at sea. Uh we're gonna to have to trust that we're just gonna to have to trust that uh naval supremacy is ours. 
which is not you know quite true but uh, we, we may well lose some but we'll find out in a minute we go there and here we've got uh, some free French we're not worried about them yet for now we what we want to do is get any Americans that are attached to the seventh army get them ashore as well select both units so I don't have to fool with this twice again go right here and that's probably it for the Americans it's not this is the US 7th Army this is attached to Africa, this is the 1st US Armored Division, we're not going to monkey with that right now it's the 5th U.S. Army. I'm not going to monkey with that either. Now we get some British guys. Now let's see what British formations we are landing. This is the 8th British Corps. We have 30 Corps. And we have 30 core and 30 core. Alright, so we need to get uh, 8th British Corps and 30 core ashore as well. So we'll go here. This is AFHQ. We don't have to move that. That's 30 core. So move them there. And then switch to Naval Transport. Put them there. This is 8th British Corps. No, we got a transport hit. That's unfortunate. Alright, so any other units that are attached to 8th Corps or 30th Corps also need to come over. Those guys are going to come over eventually as well. Alright, this is... Fifth Corps, I think that's all for the British. Okay, so now we need to be concerned about our air landings. And so we have three airborne brigades of the Commonwealth and three airborne regiments for the United States. And we will go to the air transport mode to drop them. Now they have to prep, so we're going to drop them. We're just going to use the suggested air, and we're going to launch them because otherwise we would be um, waiting a potentially significant amount of time. Um, as far as I knew, they dropped the entire divisions, but that doesn't appear to be the case in this game. Uh, so these guys are probably going to get cut up fairly badly. Uh, but let's target some additional airdrop spaces. Now one thing we definitely want to do is cut the road to Messina. So right now yep, set an airborne target. Okay, we're gonna cut the road to Messina here and then with the Americans, this is not exactly what they did historically, but we're gonna do it this way anyway. drop them both here in uh, Termini. Alright, so turn one is essentially complete. Um, all the Allied uh, stuff it has to land, so we are basically done. Let's take a look at the commander's report real quick that's under info screens. So this is the order of battle screen. This is important. You can actually blow all these up. So AFHQ is Eisenhower, who's of course in command of the Med at this point. 
Um, these are all the all the stuff that he commands. And you have UK Home Forces, which boy, we better not have to worry about that. Uh, we have Air Air Chief Marshal Charles Portal in charge of the RAF, and uh, Carl Spatz or Spots. Spots. I think it's pronounced spots. I might be wrong about that. Please correct me in the notes below if you uh, know something different. Um, is in charge of the United States Tactical Air Force. Um, the commander screen. Here's losses. This is actually what I wanted to see from the first, uh, the first from the air phase. Uh, so the Allies have lost 500 men, 508 men. Total losses, presumably this is elsewhere in the war. Air losses. I definitely want to see this. We have killed 175 pilots. That's discouraging. And the production screen. Now you do have some ability to affect this, but how? This is, you know, this is deep into the weeds of this game. I don't think we really need to monkey with this going to monkey with it now. Uh, the victory screen, this actually shows how many victory points. Um, looking at the other map information, this here actually shows me where the actual victory points for the campaign are, and it doesn't actually seem to be showing me any. Uh, I guess I should look into victory conditions for the campaign, but I care less about that than I care about the feel of, of how it ends and uh, the experience of getting there. So I'm going to call this episode concluded as soon as we actually run the end of the turn. This will be this is this will take a few minutes. So let's uh, watch carefully and don't be afraid to pause if you want to see some in detail. So we'll run the end of the turn, and we're doing a whole bunch of housekeeping stuff. This is a big map, and there's a lot for the computer and the AI to do. And the amount of logistics happening on the back end of this is, is enormous. It's actually keeping track of the, the capacity of individual rail lines. Um, now, it's going to be less important for us than it is in War in the East, which shares more or less the same ground system. But in War in the East, the rest of Europe and the Soviet Union are on different rail gauges, so you have to convert the rail before you can use it. That's not the case here in Western Europe. Air transported troops. Looks like we got some flack. Let's see what's happening here. So we looks like we lost that uh, U.S. Airborne. We may or may not have lost the entire unit. Here's the British trying to land on, trying to take a bridge up here, as I recall. And they actually landed. Now, on the landings, we should do better, because we're basically fighting Italian scrubs. So we captured Gala. Gala? Gala? My pronunciation of Italian is approximately uh, 2200 years out of date so do not quote me on any Italian pronunciations and the German names I, I can do pretty well might have to stare at it for a minute but so things are looking pretty good looks like we're going to take Syracuse when the garrisons you so you can attach these support units and we'll see this uh, more in later episodes you can attach uh, these support units that don't appear as counters on the map to other units or to cities or locations on the map. Um, so in a lot of cases, these flak units will be assigned to a city to protect the city from enemy air attacks. Um, and that's the stuff that was busy surrendering just now. Now here we have what looks like the German air phase. So our turn is now done. We'll get into a lot more of the mechanisms by which you actually move and fight in this in the next episode, because we're actually going to be on the ground moving and fighting. We're, we're now we're not. We basically just put the guys, sent them across the sea, and then dropped them off, which the computer did. Now these amphibious HQs hang around for a while 
and you can move them back to ports later. And at the point at which we have secured the island of Sicily, we will do that. They also provide naval gunfire support uh, in within a certain range of hexes, maybe just adjacent, I'm not sure. But you do have some ability to mine it, manage uh, naval gunfire support. So that's the end of the turn. So let's see the losses. Axis losses killed 274 pilots. They lost 7 fighters, 104 fighter bombers, 49 tactical bombers, 140 level bombers, 18 transports, and 35 patrol planes, and some torpedo bombers. Western Allied losses were still high, to be honest, um, but not really as bad. Um, total loss is 619 versus 624. I, as, the, as the Allied player, I'm delighted with that. Um, so ground losses, let's look at that. This is going to be really skewed right now. Uh, so the Axis have lost about 7,000 men. We've lost about 7,700 men. And then we can look at destroyed units, too. Uh, looks like we lost an airborne regiment, which we knew about. And here we are on automatic air directive creation. So we will pick that up in episode two. So stay tuned. If you're enjoying the series, please uh, say so in the comments below and like the video. Um, and st uh, stay tuned for episode two. Thanks for watching.